If you're a Mac user, you've probably spent time looking up Thunderbolt Docs and found that it's actually pretty confusing out there. If you just search Thunderbolt Dock on Amazon, you're gonna be blasted with many, many options and it can be confusing trying to figure out which one might make the most sense for you. But no doubt you've come across these three docs in your search. So in this video, we're going to compare the CalDigit TS4, the OWC Thunderbolt Dock and the Anchor 777 Apex. And hopefully this video will help you decide which one makes the most sense. I do have a quick disclaimer. I have worked with CalDigit in the past and CalDigit has sponsored some of my videos, but this video is not sponsored or collaborated with CalDigit or any of these companies right here. These opinions are my own. And this video does have a sponsor and that's CaseCoop. So these three docks are Thunderbolt 4 capable docks. And if you're confused about what Thunderbolt 4 is, it's probably the most compatible device you can get for your computer because it's compatible with Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 4 and USB 3, and all the variations of those. So the bottom line is it's Thunderbolt 4, but it will also work with computers that don't have Thunderbolt and just have USB 4 or USB 3 as well. So let's just start with the baseline differences between these docks and we'll start with the CalDigit TS4. The CalDigit TS4 has 18 ports of connectivity between the front and the back. The chassis is made out of solid aluminum all the way around and this can actually sit horizontal or vertically. It's got a rubber pad on the bottom to sit vertically, but it's also got rubber tabs you can put on the side to lay it down horizontally. The OWC Thunderbolt dock has 11 ports of connectivity between the front and the back. It is a solid band of aluminum all the way around the edge on the sides, and then the top and bottom are made of plastic. This can only sit horizontally. The Anchor 777 Apex, or Anchor Apex, has 12 ports of connectivity between the front and the back. Just like the OWC, it's a band of aluminum around the edges, and then the top and bottom are plastic. You can sit this anchor up vertically, but that requires the purchase of an extra dock for about $30. Now let's talk about the Thunderbolt ports on these Thunderbolt 4 docks. Let's first talk about the host port, and that is the connection that goes from the dock to your computer, whether that's a laptop, like a MacBook Pro, or an iMac, or a Mac Mini, or anything like that. And so on the OWC and on the Anchor, that host port is actually on the front of the device. Now that can either be a positive or a negative depending on what your preference is. In my opinion, the front host port probably creates a more disorganized, less clean setup because you're most likely not using all of these front ports at the same time, but you would always have a cable coming out of the front of the dock and then wrapping around to your computer. On the CalDigit TS4, that host port is actually on the back side. So for a more clean setup, you can route all the cables out the back of the dock and hide them behind your computer. And on the TS4, you'll see that there are two additional downstream Thunderbolt 4 ports. Those ports are good for connecting things like external SSDs, displays, and other high-speed peripherals. That could be something like audio interfaces or even something like really high-speed networking connections. On the OWC Thunderbolt dock, you actually have three downstream ports, which is one more than the CalDigit TS4. And on the Anchor, you actually get just a single downstream port. Now, why the port differences? Well, as you can see on the back of the TS4 and the Anchor, there's actually video ports as well, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And because there's video ports, they take away from the Thunderbolt connections. You can see on the back of the OWC, there are no dedicated video ports, so you get three Thunderbolt ports. So Thunderbolt this and Thunderbolt that, you know, what's the big deal about Thunderbolt? Well, besides being able to connect things like displays or network adapters or other audio interfaces or whatever, you can also connect really fast SSDs to these as well. So let's go ahead and run a speed test connecting a Thunderbolt 3 SSD to each of these docks. We can actually use my iPhone 14 Pro Max and this CaseCoo Magic Stand case to help us with this test. And CaseCoo is sponsoring this video. So let's kick off this test by moving this Final Cut Pro library, which has just over 200 gigabytes of data with lots of data and video files inside. We'll copy this to this Thunderbolt 3 drive through each dock starting with the CalDigit. So we will go ahead and start this copy right now. And while this file copies over, let me tell you more about this CaseCoo Magic Stand case, which also comes in this new frosted clear color. The Magic Stand case has everything you want in a case and more. It has a beautiful, clean design with protection for the front glass and cameras, and they come in multiple colors. The magic of this case is the built-in stand that simply folds out so you can place your phone on any surface for watching movies, taking FaceTime calls with your kids, or just to be hands-free. The Magic Stand is also fully MagSafe compatible with 48 powerful magnets in the ring to work with all of your MagSafe charging accessories. 
Check out the link in the description code below to save 10% on your Magic Stand case, and my thanks to Kesku for sponsoring this video. And the results through the CalDigidoc was 2 minutes and 45 seconds, or about 9.7 gigabits per second. The OWC completed just a little bit faster at 2 minutes and 36 seconds, or about 10 gigabits per second. And the Anchor also copied over at 2 minutes and 36 seconds, or about 10 gigabits per second. So even though the Anchor and the OWC came out just a little ahead of the CalDigit in this test, there is a margin of error depending on heat and other factors with the computer, so I'd say they're basically the same. I also ran all combinations through disk benchmarking tools, and they all came out with similar results of about 1200 megabytes per second write and about 2800 megabytes per second read. So all in all, I think the Thunderbolt 4 speed between these docks is basically the same. You can actually connect two external SSDs and still get a very similar speed on both drives at the same time. When you have a display connected, you might see a drop off of the max Thunderbolt speed because displays will always take priority over data. All right, so let's talk about video again. And I mentioned the port differences on these three devices. On the Anchor, you actually get two built-in HDMI ports. On the TS4, you get a built-in display port. And on the OWC, you just have the Thunderbolt ports. So you would need a Thunderbolt capable display or a USB-C with display port display or an adapter to go to HDMI or display port. Now, each of these docks are capable of outputting up to 8K to a single display. So you can run a 4K display, 6K display, 5K display, 8K display, but there is one difference. On the TS4 and the OWC, you can actually get 8K at up to 60 Hertz. With the Anchor, you can only get a single 8K display up to 30 Hertz. When it comes to a 4K display, each of these devices can also do high refresh rate. The Anchor and the OWC dock can do high frame rate 4K at up to 120 frames per second. The CalDigit TS4 can do high frame rate 4K at up to 144 frames per second. By now you probably understand the benefits of a higher refresh rate. It means things just happen faster on the display. So just like ProMotion on Apple's iPad Pros and iPhone Pros and MacBook Pros, when you move things around, it's just more clear and there's less blur on the screen as you move the mouse around or scroll up and down on a web page. Or when it comes to gaming, if you're playing games on your Mac, you can actually get the cleaner refresh rate for a smoother gameplay. When it comes to multiple displays, each of these docks can do up to two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. The TS4 can use DisplayPort and you can use an adapter to an HDMI if you need to. And you can use an adapter from Thunderbolt to DisplayPort or HDMI. That same goes with the OWC. And with the Anchor Dock, you can either use a Thunderbolt adapter to HDMI or DisplayPort, or you can use the two HDMI ports that are built in. Next, we're gonna talk about networking. And each of these devices have an ethernet connection built in. And ethernet is something that's either really important to you or something you don't care about at all. I actually have a 10 gigabit ethernet connection network in my house. So that's something that's important to me to be able to transfer files really fast back and forth between my NAS and my computer. The CalDigit and the Anchor both come with a one gigabit ether connection. Now that's the standard speed connection that has been around for a long time. And most of your devices are most likely one gigabit connection devices. However, 2.5 gigabit ethernet is becoming more and more popular with consumer routers on the market today. And as you would expect, 2.5 gigabit ethernet is two and a half times faster than one gigabit ethernet. So you can transfer files much faster between devices using that connection. So now let's switch over to USB. On the CalDigit TS4, you actually have eight USB ports. Now, that is divided between USB-A ports and USB-C ports. And as you can see on the CalDigit TS4, there are five ports on the back and there are three ports on the front. Now, all of these ports, all of these USB ports on the CalDigit TS4 are actually 10 gigabit per second USB ports. And that means if you need something like a really fast external SSD, but don't necessarily want to spend the money on a Thunderbolt SSD, you can get something that's a USB-C 10 gigabit SSD and still get very fast transfer speeds. And many of those drives come with USB-C to C cables and C to A cables. So you can use any of the ports on the TS4 to do that. Why do I need all of those USB ports? Well, that's really gonna come down to you and your needs. There's all kinds of things you can connect with USB-C from external audio controllers, streaming devices, cameras, lights, SSDs, printers, or even specialized tools. So the number of USB ports you need is going to come down to your needs. On the OWC Thunderbolt dock, you have three USB-A ports on the back and one USB-A port on the front. On the front, this is USB 2 speed, so that's up to 480 megabits per second. And on the back, you do get the same 10 gigabit per second ports like you get on the TS4. 
With the Anger Apex, you get four USB-A ports on the back and you get one USB-C port on the front. On the back, two of these ports are up to 10 gigabits per second and two of these are USB 2.0. And the USB 2.0 ports are fine for things like a keyboard or a mouse or a wireless dongle for them, or even something like a really old thumb drive that you just need to get data off of. Now, I do wanna point out something real quick on the front USB-C ports on the Anchor and the CalDigit TS4. Both of these have a port that allows up to 20 watts of power to come out, which means you can actually charge up other devices really fast with these ports. That can be an iPhone, an iPad, or even, heck, a MacBook Air or something like that that you can charge off of 20 watts. Now, the TS4 also has the ability to charge out of this 20 watt port even when a host is not connected. So you can disconnect your MacBook and go work somewhere else while leaving something else connected here and charging. And that could be an iPhone or an iPad or any other device that you need to keep charging, even if you're not sitting here working at the desk. I wanna talk about SD card slots real quick. And you can see that the TS4 has two slots and the OWC and the Anchor have one. That's because the CalDigit can use either SD or micro SD cards, and those are two separate slots. So you can use both of those at the same time. So you can pull video data off of a camera and you can pull audio data off an audio interface or an audio recorder at the same time using the CalDigit TS4. The other thing to point out is the TS4 and the Anchor have a spring-loaded SD card slot, whereas the OWC does not. And that's the same with the built-in port on the MacBook Pro. I really don't like using that port if I don't have to. I much prefer the springy action of the CalDigit and the Anchor because I like to be able to push my card in and know that it's connected. Also, I did test the SD card speed on all of these devices and they all ended up about the same with about 100 megabytes write per second and about 260 megabytes read per second, which is the maximum for the SD cards that I use. So there was no difference in the speeds between the SD card readers that I tested. So moving on to audio. On the front of all three of these docks, we do have a front-facing audio jack for both headphone and microphone. It's a combo jack. That's for connecting headphones or headphones with microphones. You know what they are. Now, if you're looking to connect speakers to the back of your dock for your desk setup, you're only going to find a speaker out on the back of the TS4. So just like the front host ports on these two docks, if you're connecting desktop speakers, you'll have to have the cord routing to the front of the dock. And right next to the audio out, you also do have audio in on the back of the TS4. So if you're using an external microphone with a 3.5 millimeter jack, then you can plug that in right there. And now I wanna talk about power. And each of these devices can output a lot of power to something like the MacBook Pro, which wants a lot of power. And the Anchor Apex can output up to 90 watts of power to the host computer. The OWC can provide up to 96 watts and the TS4 up to 98 watts. Now that all sounds pretty good and there's not a lot of difference between 90 and 98 watts between these devices, but that's not the whole story. So if we take a look at the power adapters that come with each of these docks, you'll see that the Anchor comes with a 120 watt power adapter, the OWC 135 and the TS4 230 watts. That's more than 100 watts more than the Anchor dock. So that's pretty interesting, right? Well, as it turns out, if you have a number of devices connected to your dock, you're not going to get that full amount of power from the OWC or the Anchor. By connecting a couple of devices like iPads and SSDs to the dock, you'll see that instead of 90 watts of power from the Anchor, it's gonna go down to around 62 watts. The OWC dock also drops from around 96 watts maximum to about 62 watts as well. The TS4, on the other hand, will provide a constant 98 watts of power, even with all of the same devices connected. That bigger power supply that comes with the TS4 is actually for a reason, and it means it's going to keep powering your laptop no matter what else you have connected to it. Now, the only other thing to point out on these docks is that the Anchor actually has a power button, and I'm not sure why, but it has one. All right, so now the real question, right? Which one of these is right for you? And hopefully this video has given you some more context to help you decide. So in my opinion, if you're somebody who uses dual monitors and they're 4K like HDMI type monitors and you maybe just need a couple of extra ports, then the Anchor Apex is probably the one for you. This one has the two HDMI ports on the back, it's got a couple of USB-A ports, and it's got a front USB-C port. So this will give you a couple of extra ports if that's what you need, and connections for two monitors. If you're somebody who doesn't use external displays, or maybe you don't use an external display at all, then the OWC may be for you. This allows you to connect a lot of really fast storage with three downstream Thunderbolt ports, and if you don't connect a display, you get all three. This also does give you a couple of USB-A ports for you know Macs that don't come with them anymore, but you don't get any extra USB-C ports. 
And if you have a real professional workload or you're somebody who just needs the most, then the TS4 is going to deliver that for you. It's got 18 ports of connectivity. Along with the rear facing host port, you also get two Thunderbolt ports for downstream connectivity. You get way more USB-C ports and you get faster ethernet. And if you're not using a USB-C or Thunderbolt capable display, you can get the fastest 4K 144 Hertz refresh rate through this DisplayPort connection and still keep these available for high speed devices. The TS4 also has the most flexibility with the rear audio ports in conjunction with the front and dual SD card slots and that really fast charging port on the front with USB-C. All of that comes with a price, and the retail price of the CalDigit TS4 is $449, but it does go on sale frequently, so check the links in the description below. The Apex from Anchor comes in at $299, and that also goes on sale frequently, and the OWC starts at $249, but again, also goes on sale frequently. So check below if you're looking for one of these devices. So that's about all I can say about these three docks. They're all really good Thunderbolt 4 docks and which one makes the most sense for you is gonna come down to your specific needs. But I am curious which one you think is going to work best for you or if you have any questions about these, let me know in the comments below. And if you're just getting a jump start on peripherals for your new Mac and you're trying to decide between an M1 Max or an M2 Max, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.